Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Wherever you are around this region or country or continent, we are glad that you are here with us today. Our worship service is recorded so that those who can't be with us in this moment can experience worship later in the week via our website. And we have a number of links that I'm going to place in the chat so that you will know um, everything you might need to know today and can access all the things that you might need to access, including the bulletin for our worship service today. I hope that you will put in the chat any joys or concerns that you want to share with our community today. And a little bit later in the service, I'm going to invite you to use the chat in a slightly different way, which is to RSVP for some things that are coming up. We're going to try to make it easier on you to RSVP so that you don't have to go to your email or sign up Genius to do some of those things, but we know that you are going to participate. So stay tuned for that. And now, Dot Bo is going to offer our prelude. Friends, welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation, and one of the ways in which we participate in being an open and affirming congregation is that those of us who want, want to do so might add our pronouns into our Zoom participant names. This helps us to welcome people of all gender identities. I want to tell you a few things about our congregation and what is happening very soon. Now, one program note you might be thinking, usually Sarah Jane Fuller does this part. Sarah Jane is recovering from her second vaccine dose, and so we will miss her today, but we are glad that she has access to the vaccine. So that is a good news, bad news. Um, you're, you, we will, you'll be hearing more from me today, which is probably bad news. Um, and we miss Sarah and hope that she is feeling better. This week, 
On Saturday, we have a game night. It is happening on Zoom. And the way that you can tell us that you're interested in participating is either filling in the Google form that was in eNotes, or right this second, putting in the chat, game night and your name. And then I will go back through the chat and know that you are interested in knowing more about the game night. Now, next Sunday afternoon, we are, weather and case counts permitting, going to gather for an Earth Day themed service outside on our lawn. And again, if you're planning on coming and you haven't filled in the Sign Up Genius yet, you can tell us that you're interested by putting that in the chat. You can put it just to me or to the whole group. Put outdoor worship in your name. And also, no need to RSVP, just a need to be here. Next Sunday morning, Reverend James Ross II, who is the Associate Conference Minister for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Southern New England Conference of the UCC, will be joining us in worship. I am thrilled, and I can't wait for you to hear his wisdom and to connect with the conference in this way. Our confirmands are also going to get a chance to meet with him in advance of the service, so that's great too. Um, speaking of confirmation, yes, we are gathering this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Wear your masks and come ready to pack some boxes for our college students and ask your remaining questions about the confirmation process or your faith. Now. Our liturgist today is Matt Sarajan, and he will join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen and greets us with peace. The peace of Christ is among us indeed. We are witnesses of God's glory and steadfast love. The transforming love of Christ is among us indeed. Come, let us worship. God of love and light, we come as witnesses of your glory and faithfulness, amazed to discover your transformative love. God, we desire for you to abide within us and for your grace to be revealed anew daily. Be with us and awaken within us the call to love one another in the way it was made real through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, Dot will lead us in our opening hymn, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing. The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. In this reading, Luke continues telling of the disciples' encounters with Jesus later on Easter Day. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. 
They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself, touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the scriptures, to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Thank you, Matt. So it's time for the children's message. And the children's message today is really a continuation of our Sunday school lesson from today, because I had the great opportunity to be with our kids today. And speaking of which, if you've ever wondered what we do to check in, we have these beads calm, sick, happy, excited, angry, sad, and we use them to check in at the beginning of Sunday school. So they're in the sanctuary right now um, so that we could check in. We talked about God creating all creatures and calling all creatures good. And we also talked about how we are part of creation and that means that God thinks we're good too. Now Matt just read us the story of the risen Jesus with signs of a body, eating a meal with his friends, eating fish with his friends. There's something about the creation story that revels in the holiness and dignity and beauty of bodies that I think is really important and it connects with today's story. Bodies are important to God. And if bodies of creatures and human bodies are important to God, then they're supposed to be important to us too. It's important that we take care of our own bodies because they're wonderful and good and created by God. And it's important that we protect and respect other bodies. All the creatures of God's good creation and other human beings too. I was thinking about Sarah. She got her second vaccine, not just to take care of her body, but to take care of all of her neighbor's bodies too. And that's a pretty special thing to do. And so I thank everyone on this call who has already had a vaccine and everyone who's excited to get your vaccine when it's available to you. So let's pray. God, we give you thanks for our bodies and for the bodies of each and every creature and animal in your creation and for the bodies of our neighbors. All of us together are part of your creation, which you have called good and we give you thanks. Bless our bodies and help us to take care of the bodies of all of your creation. Amen. Now, we have a great chance to hear the voices of our choir coming from their bodies and recorded and brought to us for our worship service today. The choir has recorded um, a, a piece called Alleluia, Alleluia. And I am going to play it as I also show a piece of art from the Philippines, from a church in the Philippines. So enjoy this Alleluia by our choir. Oh uh -huh. 
anthem from the choir. My goodness. Well, friends, my prayer before the sermon today comes from an old hymn that I grew up singing. It is called The Gift of Love. Would you pray with me? Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire, but not be given by love within, my words would be truly in vain and thin. Amen. Well, this morning we have a text in which Jesus meets with his disciples after Easter and shares with them his risen appearance with scars and all. And then he's hungry and he says, can we eat together? Fish, bread, Jesus. When Jesus is involved, food becomes sacred. The most ordinary things become sacred in Jesus' presence. Fish, bread, walks, time with friends. And that's a perfectly good sermon, which I have preached many times. I, intend, I intended to preach it again today. But this week, as I sat in front of my computer screen, I had 
a blank sermon canvas in front of me in one window. And in another window, I had a statement from the Minnesota Council of Churches about Dante Wright and George Floyd. And in another window, I had a news site where each morning there was a new name of a beloved child of God, or eight or ten of them, and a new place joining a list of tragedies. Reverend James Forbes from the Riverside Church was fond of saying, enter the pulpit with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. So fish and bread and sacred meals seemed less and less compelling to me this week. But there is a message in this text, even for this time. Suzanne Guthrie says about the scars of the risen Christ and the meals that he shared with his friends, that these are part of the mystery of our faith, the mystery of life and our personal and collective participation in those mysteries. It all hinges on the flesh. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, attend to the stranger, reveal the structures that mask injustice and challenge the institutions that perpetuate suffering. That, she says, is the point of the risen Jesus and his body. And if her point is true, then every time we speak of the risen Christ, it should be in connection to bodies in our world and our care for bodies in this moment. This week, a colleague of mine, parent of three children of color, received a frantic text from one of her members, mom of a young black man. This mom had gone for a run without her cell phone. When she returned home, there were two missed calls from her son. Instantly, she was afraid of what might have happened to him during those missed moments when she was just out getting exercise for her body. This is what it means to be a mother of a child of color in these days, it seems. My colleague prayed with this mom, and with her permission, I am sharing this prayer, although I have changed the names. Protector God, watch over your beloved child, Drew, so that Kathy can just go for a run without being afraid her child might be killed. Watch over our black and brown babies. Amen. If the risen Jesus had scars, ate fish, then bodies are important to God, every body. And the text goes on to say, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. We are witnesses in this way, witnesses of the good and holy and miraculous, witnesses to death defeated, life revealed, meals made holy, a fleshy and scarred Jesus who eats fish with his friends, the Jesus of Easter is the Jesus of incarnation, and bodies are important. But are we not also witnesses in this way? Today, witnesses of racism, terror, and violence? We could be called at any moment to testify to Easter or to testify to repentance and forgiveness of sins, 
to witness to goodness or to witness to injustice. And perhaps I think maybe we are called to be witnesses to goodness in the face of injustice. For Christ is risen and his work of justice is not over. Violent death at the hands of empire will be defeated. That is the good news. But we are also told that faith without works is dead. Easter Christians, followers of one both alive at Christmas in the form of a tiny, fragile, vulnerable human body, and alive again at Easter in the form of a man with scars and hungers. Easter Christians today are called to witness in the way that our conference minister, Darrell Goodwin, puts it, to witness, to find words and courage to speak truth to power, to declare racism a public health crisis, to deplore gun violence and police brutality. The spirit is there when we are witnesses to these things. When we do not turn away from what we see, Last night in Kenosha, yesterday in Omaha, this week in Indianapolis, last week in Boulder, the week before in Atlanta. We are witnesses when we say out loud the names Samaria and Amrajit, Carly and Sun Chung, Yong Yu and Elena, Eric and Ricky, and Denny, and have you noticed that I cannot say all of the names because we would be here for a very long time. Yet we are called to say their names. We are called to witness against gun violence, against racism, and against violence incited by racism. We, <clears throat> we are called to be the one to, we are called by the one who showed up with scars all over himself, and ate a meal with his friends to be his hands and feet in this world. Teresa of Avila put it this way in words that ring out to me again and again. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. <clears throat> Christ has no hands but ours. We are the eyes that witness care and compassion. We are the eyes that witness injustice. We are the voices who cry out for George, Dante, Adam, Brianna. We are witnesses to all these things. Amen. I invite you as we get ready to pass the peace to one another, to close your eyes and to take three deep breaths into your body, which is beloved which God loves and calls good, your body. Take three deep breaths. I invite you to look with
Christ's compassionate eyes on each of your neighbors here in this Zoom session and to offer words of peace. If you would like, you can unmute for a moment and participate verbally in this peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you, friends. Also with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. And now, as we turn to our prayer time, I invite you to enter the joys and concerns that are on your hearts and minds today in our chat to make sure that we include anyone for whom you are thankful and anyone and any place and any community for which you are praying in our prayers today. I want to give a little shout out to someone that a few of us will see in person at a distance today who is having a very special birthday. Happy birthday to Marty. Yes, I'm actually going to spotlight Marty. Marty's birthday is Tuesday, and we do wish you a blessed birthday. And if you happen to be in the Pilgrim neighborhood at 5 o'clock, join us for a little ride by to Marty's house on, in a joyful parade. I know that some of you are enjoying peak daffodil. The daffodils are a little floppy now that we've had the latest snowstorm that I can remember. Um, but spring has truly sprung in all of its glory, and I hope that wherever you are joining us from, you are starting to see the beauty of spring as well. We are praying this day for all who are sick and are struggling. And there are a number of people in our community and a number of extended family members for whom that is true this day. We continue our prayers for George. And we pray for Deanna. We pray for students and teachers that are getting ready to be back in full-time schooling or already are. And as Mona has said in the chat, we're glad for community, but frustrated and sad that our prayers are not enough to quell injustice and violence. Prayer and action moves us forward, indeed. Let us pray together for all who are in need and particularly for justice and peace in our world. Holy and loving God, you have called the world into being and named each and every part of it good. You have called us to be co-creators with you and stewards of your earth. You have called us through the voice of your son to build your reign in this world, which is a reign of justice, equality, compassion, and mercy. God, we pray that you would help us to live into that call to respect and protect and honor the bodies of all of your creation and every one of our neighbors in tangible ways, in bodily ways, remembering that your son had a body that he showed his scars to his friends, that they might be 
a message, an ongoing message to care for bodies. We pray for each person lost to gun violence, and we pray for each of their families mourning them. We pray for each person affected by racism, which means, God, we pray for all of us. We are all impacted by racism, but we particularly pray for those who have been on the receiving end of violence due to racism. We pray this day, O oh God, for a better world, imagining, imagining in this Easter season that with the hope offered by the risen Christ, it could be so, it could be so, that we could, together with determination, make a better world for every body. We lift up all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we gather to say these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Matt, who will tell us about our offering. This is the time in our service when we consider our support for this congregation and the wider church. We are grateful for all the ways in which people offer time, talent, and treasures to the ministry of Pilgrim Church. If you'd like to give online, a link is in the chat. And now, Dot will play our offertory.
Let us pray. God of abundant love, we offer a portion of our time, spiritual gifts, and resources as a sign of our love for you and for your world. O oh God, we ask that you would bless each of these offerings, and we ask that our collective offering would be an expression of healing that brings hope to a hurting world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. The closing hymn is Peace I Leave With You, my friends. dot. It's one of my favorites. And indeed, we hope that peace has come to you. 
and that you will go forth to spread that peace. Now may the spirit that was in Jesus be in us also, enabling us to know the truth, to do the will of God, and to abide always in God's peace. Amen. Dot. And thank you, Matt, for being our liturgist today. Um, if you are coming to game night or to outdoor worship, do let us know that either in the chat or by email or in Sign Up Genius. Um, and now I'm going to hit stop on our recording so that we can greet one another in coffee hour. You're welcome to unmute and put it in gallery view so you can see one another. <laughs> 